Twitter has been on a roller coaster throughout 2022, ending on October 27th in one of the biggest tech takeovers in history. Going back earlier this year, here in April, Elon Musk made a massive $44 billion bid for the company. But just three months later, he called it off. Twitter sued. Musk sued back. Oh yeah, Twitter. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> then he changed his mind again. This has been a drawn out fight between Twitter and Musk with a lot of twists and turns. Those twists and turns take place on a timeline that has not only influenced stock prices, but has also sown uncertainty among employees. And as Twitter says, contributed to a 1% decline in revenue. So how did Musk's flip-flopping on the deal lead to a six-month battle that threw off Twitter's business? His tweets, statements, and text messages, as well as court documents, tell the story. The timeline starts here, on January 31st, when Musk started buying up shares of Twitter. And he started sharing his opinions about how the platform works. He did toss out a lot of ideas on how to change Twitter, um, how he thought he could make Twitter better. Things like emphasizing free speech, things like changing how it approaches content moderation. After months of buying, Musk publicly disclosed a 9.2% stake in the company. His first tweet of the day said simply, The next day, Twitter announced that Musk would be joining the board. Musk is one of the most prominent users of Twitter, but he's also been one of its loudest critics. Twitter invited him to join the board to try to bring him into the fold and work with him on these issues. Musk tweeted that he was looking forward to making significant improvements to Twitter in the coming months. At first, when um, he was talking with Twitter's leadership, it was pretty friendly. But then friction, tension started to emerge. As Musk was gearing up to join, he was still criticizing the platform, tweeting, is Twitter dying? CEO Parag Agrawal texted Musk, it's my responsibility to tell you that it's not helping me make Twitter better in the current context. To which Musk responded, I'm not joining the board. This is a waste of time. We'll make an offer to take Twitter private. Musk would be the new owner. And I think the thinking is that if Twitter's private, he would be able to take more risk in trying to overhaul or jumpstart their business. It didn't take long for Musk to act on that promise, formally announcing his $43 billion bid to take over the company. The number was later revised to $44 billion. In an interview with Ted that day, he explained his decision. My, my strong intuitive sense is that uh, having a public platform that is maximally trusted um, and, 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 and broadly inclusive um, is extremely important to the future of civilization. On April 25th, Musk and Twitter officially reached a merger agreement. But even as Musk was lining up fresh financing and sharing more ideas for the platform, he had a surprise in store. The billionaire CEO announcing just hours ago that the $44 billion deal to take Twitter private is now on hold. Musk tweeted that the deal was temporarily on hold as he was waiting for more information from Twitter on the number of spam accounts on the site. We know that Musk had talked about um, bots um, before the deal, um, but then he started having um, more concerns or saying he had more concerns and he started questioning kind of the, the health of Twitter's business. Musk expressed interest in a lower price for the company at the All In Summit on May 16th. Uh, you, you can't pay the same price for something that is much worse than they claimed. Twitter's CEO addressed Musk's bot claims, tweeting in a thread that the company estimated that less than 5% of reported monetizable daily active users are spam accounts, and they don't believe this specific estimation can be performed externally. Musk replied with several tweets, but one was just... Musk continued to push himself further from the deal, threatening to walk away in a letter to Twitter, saying he believed the company is actively resisting and thwarting his information rights. Musk's reversal was followed by a flurry of coverage and commentary. Yeah, I feel like Elon is pretty close to saying, uh, I'm so sorry, my two-year-old took my iPad and clicked buy, so I didn't know what to... <laughs> So we're cool, we're cool, right? Can... He officially tried to call the whole thing off at the beginning of July. I mean, at the start, Musk was really pushing for this deal, and Twitter was kind of resisting. And then it, it kind of seemed like their positions changed, and um, Musk was the one trying to back out while Twitter was saying that they wanted to close. 
Four days later, Twitter formally sued Musk in an effort to force the merger through. So Twitter said they did share information about how they handled um, spam and fake accounts with Musk, um, but Musk kept demanding more. And um, that was a big part of the legal fight that was going on. The filing took aim at Musk's flip-flopping, focusing on how it affected the company. Just looking through the filing here, um, it says, quote, Musk apparently believes that he, unlike every other party subject to Delaware contract law, is free to change his mind, trash the company, disrupt its operations, destroy stockholder value, and walk away. Musk filed a countersuit, claiming revisions to user numbers in the company's first quarter earnings in April were what sparked his push for bot data. Twitter rejected Musk's claims. As both sides prepared for a fight in court, a former Twitter employee filed a whistleblower complaint against the company, alleging, among other things, that Twitter doesn't properly count spam accounts. Musk seized on that as further ammunition to call the agreement off. But after pushing for months to end the deal, he changed his mind again. At the beginning of October, he proposed closing on the original terms. That was surprising because it's not really like him to back down. I mean, we've seen um, prior lawsuits where um, he's fought more and for longer. In a Tesla earnings call on October 19th, Musk spoke briefly about the deal. Although, obviously, um, myself and the other investors are obviously overpaying for Twitter right now, um, the long-term potential for Twitter, in my view, is an order of magnitude greater than its current value. Twitter isn't in the shape it was back in April. We have more you know, economic concerns just broadly in the economy. And then specifically for Twitter, the uncertainty has weighed on Twitter um, because no one knew if the deal was actually going to go through. Upon completing the takeover, Musk fired CEO Parag Agarwal and Chief Financial Officer Ned Segal, according to people familiar with the matter. Twitter did not immediately respond to requests for comment.